Good morning, church. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. The peace of the Lord be with you. Our hymn this morning is Let Your Heart Be Broken. Let Your Heart Be Broken. Hymn number 539. Seek 
my holiness. In the world, share my desire. Our invocation together, holy, you are deep within our world, calling us to join you in creating abundant life for all. Open our hearts to recognize you. Free us to trust you for your God. Enable us to repent and forgive and join you in your work to make all things new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Genesis chapter 45, verses 3 through 11 and 15. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in this land for two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Make haste, and go up to my father, and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me. You and your children, and your children's children, and your flocks, and your herds, and all that you have. And there I will provide for you. And there are yet five years of famine to come, lest you and your household, and all that you have, come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers, and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Please join me in the reading of Psalm 37 by responding with the refrain printed in your bulletin. I'm sorry, printed in the hymnal. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like grass and wither like the green herb. The humble shall come to the land, and enjoy all his sins. Trust in the Lord and do good, so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. The humble shall come to the land, and enjoy all his sins. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the new day. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. The humble shall own the land and enjoy the fullness of peace. Yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight in abundant prosperity. The humble shall own the land and enjoy the fullness of peace. 
The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their refuge in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. The humble shall go on the land and enjoy the fullness of peace. Gospel reading today is Luke 6, verses 27 through 38. Hear what Jesus says. But I say to you that here, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you, to him who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And of him who takes away your goods, do not ask them again. And as you wish that men would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. And do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the selfish. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give it, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be measured you get back. God's word for God's people. Praise be to God. Amen. Topic of 
radical love. For charge to keep I have before a God to glorify, for a God that's fitted to the skies, and a God that looks upon this piece of clay for a moment. I ask God that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. Amen. Radical love. And this is what Jesus said, if I can just give you a different version of it. He said, but to you who are listening, I said, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Blessed are those who are cursed. Bless those who curse you. Bless those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to the other. Someone takes your coat, don't withhold your shirt. Do to others as you would have them do unto you. If you love those who only love you, what credit is it to you? Even sinners, individuals, or in the world will do the same. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is it to you? Even sinners give and lend to those expecting to be repaid. But then he emphasizes again in verse 35. But love your enemies. Do good to them and to lend them without expecting anything back. And then he says, then he says, then your reward will be great. And you will be children of the Most High. Because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. But be merciful. For this few moments, I'm speaking to you about a radical love. I'm speaking to you about something that not only that I pondered all week, but that I struggled with. I struggled with it because it was last night and this morning that I really got what Jesus was really trying to tell me, and so I can tell it to you. He says, if you love those who love you, what credit is it to you? He said, even sinners does that. We can love people who love us. We can give to people who give to us. We can treat people well when they treat us well. But what is it to love somebody who you know don't love you? Who you know who mistreats you? Who you know does not have your best interests in mind. Jesus wants to, for this few moments, to remind us that taking that step to love somebody who does not love you brings upon to your life a greater eternal purpose. What was interesting yesterday in my business, I went to two nursing homes and I saw Shirley Reinhardt and Eva Polis. And I saw Joe. And let me just say this to you. Yesterday, this week has been a very difficult week. Not because my enemies came at me, because just life just came at me. And yet, I felt like yesterday I was dancing in a ball, having a good time with those three people. When I went to see Eva, I first went to see Joe. And Joe wasn't in this room. Typical Joe, walking the halls. So I go see Eva, and we start talking, and she's smiling, and she almost wants to cry. And as she's about to cry, I'm about to cry, and it felt good. Then Joe wanders in the room. And when Joe wanders in the room, I was like, what's up, Joe? He looks at me, he looks at Eva, like he wants to grab Eva's wheelchair and roll her out. I'm like, no, nah, we're not going anywhere. He sat down, gave a thumbs up. Then I went to see Cheryl, and what a treat that was. Laughing back and forth about her being an athlete, us looking at the Olympics together. See, it's easy, it's easy to enjoy the space of people who like you and you like them. It's easy to go visit somebody, right, who wants to see you. But what is it like to go visit somebody who don't want to see you? What is it like to be in the presence of somebody who you know does not have your best interest in mind? 
As I thought about this, loving your enemies and the ungratefulness and wickedness of human beings, I had to take a step back and think about my own mortality. As I thought of a person, two individuals that were 90 and 95, and was proud to tell me their ages, I thought about my mortality. I thought about even though they might be in their 90s and perhaps they'll see a hundred, the eternal purpose, the eternal life will far more exceed their time on earth. That the temporary, the temporary accomplishments and the temporary pleasures of the world will feed away. It is the eternal purposes that will count. And that's what Jesus is talking about in this text. He's talking about loving somebody who needs to be loved. As we begin this Lenten journey, we will see how Jesus spoke in various towns to various people and healed and fed the thousands. On one Sunday, on one Sunday, they're praising him and saying, Hosanna to the highest, great is the king of Israel. It was in five days the same people that are praising him, or some of the same ones are saying, crucify him, love your enemies. Jesus used this text in Luke to remind us that to love your enemy is to love God. And to love your enemy means that that love that you have for God can be transferred to your enemy. That's a very difficult thing, especially with everything in our society. As I look at television this week, and I look at individuals who have been incarcerated because they've made mistakes in their lives. When I looked at the situation of a young woman who had been on the street for almost 28 years of her life, and she reconnected with her daughters and grandchildren, and how this one woman became a conduit to bring that family together. And the daughter spoke about it one breath, and she said, I had no mother, now I have a mother, and also a mother who has grandchildren. Wow. That woman was so grateful to God that someone reached out for her in the midst of her pain to make a phone call with her family after all the years of being separated from her family, that she was loved enough to be reconnected to her family. I wonder why we treat people so difficult when they come into trouble. Why can't we, like Jesus, love them, forgive them in their shortcomings? I don't realize that it's in the midst of that that we find ourselves in a very difficult place. At the end of this text, he says, do not judge. He says, do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Do not judge. Very difficult in our society. Do not condemn. You fall short in society no matter how high you've been on the horse. If you fall off, we have a tendency to judge, condemn, and not forgive. He says this at the end. But then he also says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, and will pour into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be used to you. And I thought about this as I meditated on this text. Love your enemies. Do not judge. Do not condemn. Forgive as you will be forgiven. Jesus is telling them this because what is about to happen to him as we begin this Lenten season is the same thing that them who are followers of Christ will also experience. See, Jesus is asking us to love our enemies because he's trying to take us to another level. He said, sinners, they love their friends. That's easy to do. But what would it be for you to be that Christian that can go above, not just loving your friends, but loving those who don't love you? It's a challenge. I would say to you, in 
and of yourself is impossible. Because the one thing we always remember when we're hurt, we remember how we were hurt and who hurt us. But I want to ask you just for a second, if you could write in your seat, to think about somebody who's hurt you. And for a moment, if you could, with the deep inside of you, to pray for them. What would it be like to pray for that supervisor? From the time you walk in the door in the office to the time you leave, they just give you hell. What would it be to pray for someone who you know they're going after your job? They, you know they don't have your best interest in mind, but you pray for them anyway. That's a radical love. That's a love that goes beyond anything any one human being can do. And then I got the aha moment, y'all. I'm laying in the bed for about an hour and a half this morning saying, how do I tell somebody to love their enemies when I myself struggle with loving those who have hurt me, those who I know perhaps don't have my best interests in mind? And some people say, well, you know, Charles, you know, you just be a little paranoid. You know, they really don't dislike you. You just misunderstand it. Now, let's be honest, guys. We know when someone just doesn't like us. Let's get the, let's call a spade a spade. We know when people don't like us. But then it came to me. It says to love your enemy, you got to pray for your enemy. Pray for your enemy. We must pray for God to open their hearts that they will be enlightened. Let us pray for them. See, we pray for them. I bet you, if I ask you, what's your morning prayers? Your morning prayers are about you. God, help me get through the day. God, help me be strong. God, help me pay my bills. God, help me get that job. God, help me stay off the alcohol. God, help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me. But what would it be like to get up in the morning and pray for somebody who you know is wounded, mentally, physically, emotionally. Perhaps in your prayers, God will touch their hearts. I am convinced of this. Anybody that I've done wrong or who has done wrong to me, it happened because of my and their lack of understanding of who the human being is. When I have done people wrong, and I have, the people have done me wrong, which they have, it's because of my lack of understanding of who they are and who I am. It's who I am in God that makes me love them despite them. Love. When Jesus was on the cross, 
As I always joke with y'all, I say, he doesn't have to stretch on the cross and say, all you Pharisees, you just wait till I get off this cross and come <laughs> Three days, I'm going after the power first, then I'm going after that coward Peter, then I'm going to go to that doubt Thomas and remind him, how could you doubt me? Look at my hands. No. He says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And that's the same prayer we must pray for our enemy. Because it's in that prayer for our enemy when we say, Father, forgive me for I know not what I do. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Then, then you can understand why you're praying for your enemy. Then you can understand how God can change. Because the truth be told, God can do anything. He can change a stony heart and make it love. When Jesus talked about turning the other cheek, we tend to think he's physically talking about slap on one side, slap on the other side. What Jesus is really trying to tell his disciples and those around him is a soft response can turn away wrath. You ever been able, you ever want to disable a person in an argument? You know the best way to disable a person in an argument? is return a soft response. When you return a soft response, they start mumbling on their next words. They do. Because they expect you to come back and forth, back and forth. But when you turn a harsh response into a soft response, you catch them off guard. And while they're caught on guard, off guard, God at that point is working on them. That's right. Because if I give you a soft response, it's hard for you to come back to something else. If I say to you, listen, I misunderstood what you said. Please forgive me. Don't come back to that. It's hard to come back with That's why he says, love your enemies. 
You, you, you know, people hear that. The first thing we say is, well, you expecting Reverend Rogers for people to walk over me? And I then put on my cast hat. And I say, you ever went to a cross? You ever was God in the flesh and got spit on? Were you wiped out when you brought up your worst thoughts? Were you wiped out when you did that stuff you did a few years ago that nobody knows about but you and God? I said, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. And that's not to say that people should get away with something. Nobody gets away with anything. Nobody. And if you, if you think they get away with it, Prayer of the righteous availeth much. 
much. You know, yes. That's what I'm talking about. That when we pray for our enemies, we'll love our enemies. I got it. I didn't have it before. I kept saying, how do I tell people to pray for people that hurt them? How do you do that? How do you love somebody? You can only love them when you pray for them. When you pray for them, then your prayers will turn into love. I, 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 I did. I super, trooper did. To pray for individuals who've done me in. And watch and see how God will move in their lives. As we think about what I just preached today, we turn to hymn number 306, Michael 16. 309, I'm sorry, 309, I apologize. And I had written, I had written up 309, 309, which is Michael 6 and 8. Justice, mercy, and walking humbly with God.
today. We pray for all those who are mourning. Today we pray for Pat, Jill, Paul, Amy, Frank, Eva, Bill, and Doug. We pray for Bruce, Bob, Sylvia, Joey, Katie, and Shirley. We pray for the Todd family, Boston family, very, very. the Witchers. We pray for Aunt, Ernie, and Daniel. Very. We pray for Mike and Ruth. And we pray for the Militant family at the University of Oregon. Amen. We pray for all those who are struggling Just a bit with drug addiction, depression, mental health. Just a bit of Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever.
with him is hymn number 540, Christ for the World We Sing. Hymn number 540. Thank you. 